Hello everyone, this is Board Games of Bourbon. I'm Glenn Flaherty, and right now we're going to talk about the Mariana Trench, the new game coming to you from Bright Light Games. It plays one or two people. The solo mode plays very similar to the two-player mode, 10 to 15 minutes per game. And what you have here is essentially a deep sea dungeon delve where you are pillaging the sea below you, trying to get the most wealth out of it through set collection, and you're trying to beat the timer, which is set by this deck of cards. There's 16 cards. Every time you take a card, out of here it uh, reduces the time and then there's three final cards in the deck that look like oxygen that tell you that the end is on its way now the cool thing about this game is twofold one it's the card play kind of along the lines of mating quest or palm island or even one deck dungeon when you are going through the game and you are taking your treasures to see what your fate may be it will either be a treasure and help you score points or you use it as an attribute to enlarge your capabilities the second thing that makes this really interesting is that because there are 16 cards Unlike so many games where uh, the sense of discovery and finding out how to win the game comes over a long-term play, this game actually gets better the faster you learn how to play the deck and what is in it. In that sense, because you have to learn how to score everything, it actually plays out a lot like Tides of Time, the really wonderful two-player game. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to tell you briefly how the game plays and so you can get a sense about it. I'm going to talk about two other things as well. Uh, when this was sent to me, it was sent with this uh, preteen mat here, which they're uh, going to sell as an addition on the Kickstarter. Also, all these cards here that they're hoping will be funded as an a, as a extra goal on the uh, Kickstarter as well as a stretch goal. This kind of adds like a roller coaster ride to the game, okay? But the game itself, let's talk about how it scores and how um, there's different ways you can go about it. Now, when you start the game, you have this right here. This is descending into the Mariana Trench right here. And you're gonna start out as one of two submarines in the game. When you start out as a submarine in the game, you have certain capabilities. You're able to hold one small fish. You're able to travel one or two spaces down at a time, which is important for strategic reasons. You have three rivets in your machine. Um, as long as you stay healthy, you're good. But every time they pop, it's negative two. You have the ability to gain shocks that look like lightning bolts. They help keep like a kraken off of you and stuff like this and prevent damage from coming. Research tokens here are worth two points each. Sometimes you can get even more, and that's really going to help a lot of the scoring. You also have the ability to have sonar, and sonar will help you look either above or below to depending on what direction you're going in, and that will help you forecast what you need to get sets to score. It'll also help you uh, prevent injury along the way. So what's going to happen is you're going to come down. You're going to go like one, two, and you're going to go as deep as you can on your turn. And then you're going to reveal a card. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. In this case, it's a giant octopus, and that's a bad one. But there is a lot of information on here to be aware of. The giant octopus. First of all, it says that you pop a rivet. So you put a popped rivet on your summary. It's negative two points. But it has two separate things on it. It has the ability to increase your sonar, which means I can look as I travel me alone, I can look at a card and see if it's good for me or not. In this case, it's a moray eel that can give me certain icons. This has a pink fish and a small fish on it. Uh, here what I have is the symbol of a octopus and I have a large animal. I do not have large animal capacity on here, but I also don't have um, uh, sonar capabilities. So the decision at that point is what do I want to take it at? Well, for me, what I'm going to do is I can't house a large animal, so I'm going to put it right here, and I'm going to use it as a sonar capability. If I'm playing with someone else, they basically do the same thing. They can go one or they can go two. What you would do is you'd slide down the cards and you'd replace them, and then they can come out. They start down, by the way. Okay, so let's say you come down one. My opponent comes down one. If it's the AI when you're playing solo, they go as far down as they can. They take no injuries. But let's pretend this is the second player. They come down, they flip this over, and boom, giant squid. They take an injury right away. Now, you always have the option of taking uh, the animal or leaving it uh, displayed if you cannot take it. Uh, it, it only attacks the first time it comes out, however. Now, in this case, what it does is it gives this player the ability to not only travel two spaces at a time, now it can travel three. So we're going to go ahead and take that, 
and we're going to stick it right there. They can travel three. This gets replaced. Now, this is essentially how it's going to go on. Uh, the frogfish, the one on my left here, they're going to go two more. They're going to come down. They do actually, you know what, they're here. They have sonar. They're going to take a look here and see what's here and what's there alone. This right here uh, gives them the ability to go three at a time, small fish, which they can house, and a pink. So they're going to go ahead, come here, and they're going to take it, and they're going to turn that into a symbol. So now they have some symbols on their card that they can score with. These are going to slide down again. Another card is going to come out. Okay, now, essentially, this is how it's going to go through all of these cards. What do we have on display here? Uh, we have a, an animal that could have increased uh, our ability to capture large animals instead of small. That's important for the strategy in the game because when you're getting symbols... Uh, when you have the large capacity, you can either take a large capacity animal or you can take two small. So that has implications in how you're going to score. Now, I do have to tell you how you're going to score. We're going to get to that in a minute. But you're going to score based on not only how many research tokens you get for coming to the bottom of the game, coming to the Mariana's Trench and coming back up, but how many different kinds of cards you have and also how many of one single card you're going to have. We're going to talk about that in a moment, okay? So whether you house two small ones or one large one is going to make an implication in there. Okay, turn this over again here. We have another ability to house a large animal. We have this down here that would have been another attack. So because I had the sonar, I would have seen it. I would have left it for the shrimp boat to uh, find and have the fun of being destroyed by that. So this comes all the way down. We reach the bottom floor, and this lets them get a research token. Now at this point, I can only take one research token. Okay, and then I come all the way up, you know, I can take cards as I come back up as well. But when I come back up here, now I'm going to the research ship. And when I go to the research ship, I unload my uh, research token there. And if I had two, uh, if I had grown to the capacity of taking two research tokens, I could have unloaded two. You can also get yourself a uh, shock right there, a little lightning bolt, and use those lightning bolts to scare off the big baddie. So when you come back down, and had I come across the octopus on my first try, I could have discarded this token, and I could have told the octopus to, nay, go away, leave me alone. Okay, now that's the base game. Now, how does that play out as far as you play? Well, okay, here's the scoring for the research tokens. You're going to get two points per research token. If I have two different kinds of cards, I get two points. If I have two of one kind of card, I get two. If I have three different types, I get four. If I have three of a kind, I get four. If I get four different types, I get seven. If I have four of a kind, I get seven. There's a lot of parity there, but it actually changes up once you start doing things in the expansion. So let's talk about the expansion for a moment here. Okay, when we look through the expansion, we have a whole bunch of cards here. And what the expansion that they're hoping to get to, the uh, stretch goal, is you're going to get a bunch of fish in here called sunfish. And the sunfish are going to do two things. They are going to give you a wild token that you can use to pair however you wish, either doing runs or four of a kinds. This one has large capacity. Again, the large capacity changes how you're going to score things. It also gives you a research uh, icon there. And what that's going to do is going to let you take this research icon and put it on your side of the board. When you come down to the bottom, you are now able to take two research tokens on your ship, and then you go back to the top. Okay? And when you go back to the top, you have to unload those. And that's how you're going to score more points. Now remember, each of those are two, so you get four at a time. It might behoove you to do something like that maybe later in the game when you don't see that you're able to get enough of your runs or of your kinds like that. That's one kind of card that's in the expansion. There's four of those. Then you have these things over here that are the actual big baddies, and there's a whole host of them in here. We have the Plesiosaurus, we have the Kraken, the Megalodon, the Krakenos, I guess that's our Greek uh, counterpoint there, the Mosasaurus, and what is this called? The Dunkleosteus, which a uh, Dunkle. All right, maybe that's from like uh, Lord of the Rings or something. So what does the Plesiosaurus do? It, it's basically all bad news. When revealed, the Plesiosaurus eats one deep sea creature loaded onto your sub. So therefore, you're going to lose the icons, the scoring opportunities. If the sub contains no deep sea creatures, pop a rivet. So you're in bad shape either way. You want a shock to get that to go away. When revealed, the Kraken, the Kraken drags the sub to the trench floor, but you do not get research tokens, totally undermining, especially if you spent time trying to get the uh, research center there, okay? No damage to the sub. 
So this is much more chaotic, much more of an adventure, a throw going on, the Megalodon, but it does elongate the game as well. When revealed, the Megalodon eats a card directly above or below the player who revealed this card decides which one. Okay, and it goes on. When revealed, immediately sink to the trench floor. Uh, steal one research per round until all tokens are gone. Shock this animal to remove it from the game. Oh, that would be welcomed. When revealed, bites off one upgrade. Eh, you definitely don't want that to come out early. Uh, bites off one upgrade attached to your sub. If sub contains no upgrades, pop one rivet. Shock to release without damage. And it goes on. Now... What you're going to find is, because the cards are so limited, this definitely makes an adventure, but with limited cards, knowing what's been taken by your opponent, know what you have taken, know what's remaining in this deck here, is going to give you that tides of time feeling where you know it's coming up, you're hedging your bets, you're planning for it to come, you're having it come around so you can complete your sets. Now this deck of cards, every time, if you know you need to catch up, you're not necessarily gonna take these cards because remember, every time you take a card, it has to be replaced. And every time you're replacing a card in the center, the time's ticking away and you're left. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a little bit of a warning here. One, two, three, these oxygen cars are telling you the end is coming. Change your plans, do what you gotta do. It's like in a boxing match when they ring the bell 10 seconds before it's over so you can kind of put out your last fury there. All the icons in the game, you have pinks over here, you have small fish, you have another pink and a small fish, you have a, a large capacity here, and you have the uh, shark right there you gotta deal with. Here, an angler fish, I believe. Oh, look, it even says right there, okay. And so on, there's not too many. So you're able to plot around it. Maybe in a way you could even say it's chest. Fixed amount of pieces, you know what you're gonna encounter there, the giant squid yet again. Let's take a look at the last two cards here. The pelican eel, haven't even heard of that before. I'm gonna look that up and has an angler icon. And lastly, the red jellyfish, okay, with another angler. So that essentially is gonna be the game. The base game itself, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, tides time. If you get the expansion, more of a roller coaster experience. It's almost like playing like Star Realms with all the expansions in there. And then you have this really cool mat that actually I'm gonna start using for a lot of things. I love the environment that it says. The other great thing about it is it has like these straight lines so you can play with other games and lay your cards out the street. So I actually think it's multi-purpose. So that is, in a nutshell, the Mariana Trench, the new game by Bright Light Games. One to two players, 10 to 15 minutes. It says eight and over, but I think you can definitely go younger. If you have questions about gameplay, please let me know. I'm happy to help. I have all the answers. And until next time, friends, be well. Take care. Bye.